Right, here we go. Y'all ready? I was the number one pick in the 1999 Major League Baseball Amateur Draft. It's a pretty weak run. I have 28 of the most awesome tattoos in the history of tattoos. I'm the new center fielder for your Texas Rangers. I'm Josh Hamilton. This is my story in my own words. That's it? <laughs> First thing I thought when I found out I was coming to Texas was uh, how excited I was um, about coming to this organization because such a wonderful organization. Heard always heard great things about it. The fishing is great in Texas. The hunting is great in Texas, and I knew I had to get a lot of connections that way. So. The Rangers have been searching for consistency at the center field position for years now. Seven different opening day center fielders over the last eight years. Can you be that stable fixture they've been waiting for? I think so. I mean, you know, I'd like to be that guy. Um, you know, but if I go out and I try to try to think about it and, and say, you know, I want to be that guy, uh, most likely it's not going to happen. I mean, you know, if I go out and say, hey, I'm going to have fun, you know, playing baseball, it's just in a different different place now. Um, and remember, you know, it's, I approach it now like it's a little league again. I mean, I'm out there having fun, I'm doing something I get to do, uh, that I love to do um, for a living. And, uh, you know, because at first when I got suspended from baseball, it was, you know, I was starting to take things for granted a little bit, you know, getting to the park and, you know, it was just kind of becoming a job and a grind and, uh, you know, being back in it now and, and going through what I've gone through is, is kind of put things in a new perspective. What's your, um, you know, interaction been with him so far and your thoughts on, on Wash? It, it's been good. Um, uh, you know, I didn't know, I didn't know who he was or what he looked like or anything. And I met him, I was like, that's what do you imagine? I was like, he, he seems like a pretty cool guy. He, he's, he seems like, uh, you know, he's hard-nosed, uh, but at the same time, you know, that he'll let you just play and do what he knows that you're capable, hopefully, of doing. And uh, I don't know, he's a character, I know that. <laughs> he's a trip. And uh, like I said, that's, that's, that's the kind of manager you need. You need one that uh, knows when uh, there's a time to, you know, pat a guy on the back or get in his face or, you know, um, joke around and have a good time with them. I mean, you know, you need somebody to interact with you as a player, but at the same time that you look at and you respect as a manager, and I already see that from Wash. Kind of tell us a little bit about yourself as a baseball player. We're just getting a chance to finally see you up here at this level. If you had to give a scouting report on yourself, what would it be? Can't do that. No? Can't give that away? <laughs> Don't let this tape get into somebody else's hands. Um, you know, I usually don't say any talk about myself as far as baseball goes. Um, I usually kind of put it like uh, I let people assess me by, by watching me. You know, I don't really, you know, give a good scouting report or a bad scouting report. You know, whatever is going to be thought is I just let them, let them look at me and, and see what they think. Uh, you know, if I had to give a scouting report, I guess, you know, it's, uh, you know, I'm perfect, uh, you know, I don't do anything wrong. Uh, <laughs> no, it's hard to say. It's hard for me to talk about myself as a, as a ball player, you know. So. Why is that? I don't know, just, you know, I like to keep, you know, I like to think I'm a humble person, you know, and I, and I just don't like talking about myself in general. I like talking about my life and things, you know, I go through and overcome and mm -hmm. things like that, but, you know, when it's time to play baseball, you know, just go out and I let it speak for itself, you know, kind of actions louder than words type of thing. Coming up, Josh talks about the toughest battle of his life. That first night, first uh, drink I had, I had my first line of cocaine too. You were the number one overall pick. Your career seemed to be going perfectly, but then everything changed. Spring of 2001, okay. uh, me and my parents got in a car accident coming home from a spring training game and uh, a dump truck hit us, ran a red light and T-boned us 
And uh, after that, really the only, <clears throat> my parents left Florida, went home to Carolina. And uh, for my first time in my life, I kind of was, was uh, separated from the two things I really knew. And I'm not using this as an excuse of why I did what I did, but baseball and my parents were two things I knew, and they were kind of both taken away at the same time. Um, and I, you know, I hung out at the tattoo parlor a couple of times, got a couple of tattoos, and before all this happened, and so I was going to the park every day at 7:30 and coming home at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, and was just there and didn't have any family there, or had plenty of money. Um, so I kind of adopted, you know, somewhere that I'd been before who, you know, where I felt comfortable at, and that was the tattoo parlor. And so I started hanging out there. I started going there, and some days I'd get two, three tattoos a day. And before the drugs and stuff started, I think it was really, um, that's the way I was coping with everything, by sitting in the tattoo chair and getting worked on for, you know, eight or nine hours. And uh, just one night, and I, I talk about this all the time with kids and youth groups and things. You know, I talk about people, places, and things. Well, if I'm not doing something and I'm around somebody long enough, I'm going to start doing what they're doing. Same thing with the places I hang out at. You know, eventually I'm going to start doing the things they're doing there. And just one night they invited me out, and the first, that first night, the first uh, drink I had, I had my first line of cocaine too. And it was, uh, you know, I knew it was wrong, and, you know, is, you know, talk about choices too with the kids. I mean, every choice I make is going to have either a good con consequence or a bad consequence. Um, and you know, it's, uh, it's just a choice I made at the time. You know, but uh, over the next, say, two weeks, they used it about seven, eight times, and uh, went to a sports psychologist with a Del Rays, talked about my injuries, and. Uh, he asked me if anything else needed to be said, and I told him what I've been doing. So I was on a plane to Betty Ford the next next day, and uh, I left after eight days there. Went back to playing baseball, stayed clean for 2002, half the year. Then I got hurt again, and it was like the cycle was starting to repeat itself. I went looking for the wrong things again, hanging out with the wrong people, and over the next three, two, three years, see 2005. So three years, pretty much. It was off and on, using, suspended from baseball. And uh, of course, then again, I can look at it as <clears throat> how sad and tragic, but you know, if I hadn't gone through that, then I wouldn't have a wife, and I wouldn't have two kids and one on the way, and um, my relationship with God wouldn't be as strong as it is now. And you know, I just look at it that way. You know, God's plan. It's never completely behind you, but it's obviously something you've learned to deal with. Is the addiction something you battle every day? Yeah, I, I don't feel that way. You know, I feel like God's relieved me of that um, obsession and compulsion to do, do those things. Um, do I still get, uh, will I be tempted to do it sometimes in my mind? Yeah, you know, do I still dream about it sometimes? Yeah. Um, do I still ride down the highway and, you know, sometimes I smell something that tasted like the drugs in the air, you know? It's just, you know, basically the physical part, cravings and stuff are, are done with and over with, but some, every once in a while that something will sneak in my, my mind or pop out. It is such a message, an inspirational message of survival, and there's no other way to look at it than that. And it sounds like you're able to embrace that now, but do you get sick of everybody asking you about it or wanting you to tell that story? How do you battle with that? Uh, no, if I had to do it every day, I mean, I'm sure I'd get tired of it, but, you know, usually that's why we get everybody together once. Um, you know, especially when we go to new cities and stuff. But, you know, just like uh, this past the off season, uh, I spoke a lot, and my wife, Katie, spoke with me a few times. And, uh, you know, that's what we really feel like we're called to do. And uh, like she said before, you know, that's, that's the bigger purpose. You know, baseball's the platform to be able to do that. Um, so, you know, I don't feel obligated. I feel, you know, like it's a privilege. Um, to have gone through that and to come out on the other side and, you know, to share God's grace and God's mercy with people. Coming up.
up, Josh talks about one of his other passions, his tattoos, and what they all mean. When I was getting the tattoos, and I was getting two and three a day, like I said, no soul, devil faces, all this stuff, and then the very last one I got was a cross with Christ's face in the middle of it, on the back of my leg, like it's plugged in behind me. in a great American ballpark. They're giving Josh Hamilton a prolonged standing ovation as he comes up to pinch hit here in the eighth inning. What a special moment, Chris, for this young man who's battled so much. After everything that you've gone through to get to that point, what did that feel like? Uh, it was an awesome feeling. It, it made it so much uh, sweeter, I guess you could say, that, you know, I, I'd gotten there that way. Um, you know, I don't think I would have appreciated it as much if I'd gotten there. Um, without going through all that, see my family, to, to get that reception in, in Cincinnati, you know, these people didn't know me. There's a liner to left, sink in, it will be caught by Merton. Nice play by Merton, but listen to the hand they'll give Hamilton. I'd done well in spring training, but, you know, and I told my story, and I think, you know, it helped them identify with me because most everybody, most everybody either knows somebody or has somebody in their family or a friend that has gone through what I went through. Um, and everybody's story is different, but it, it's all the same um, as far as sin, sin, the sin part of it. Are the tattoos good reminders or bad reminders? I don't even notice them anymore. Do they have meaning? They, they do. Um, you know, it's weird because when I was getting the tattoos, and I was getting two and three a day, um, you know, I got some, some of demons on my legs and devil in my arms and, um, you know, no eyes mean no soul. And when I got all these tattoos, um, like I said, no soul devil faces, all this stuff, and then the very last one I got was a cross with Christ's face in the middle of it, in the back of my leg, like it's plugged in behind me, my skin. And I, and I wouldn't, you know, thinking, you know, yeah, I'm, we'll get this because it means this, because it means this, blah, blah, blah. I just got them. And then after, when I look back on it now, I got all these bad demons and all this stuff, and then the very last one I got was this one. So, I mean, I believe in spiritual warfare, and I believe, you know, there's good and evil and pulling after you to get you and that sort of stuff. And, you know, I really think I was going through that at the time. For those of us that will never know what that feels like, what is it like to be the number one pick? Sorry. <laughs> She's like, huh? Uh, it's, it's all right. I mean, you know, it's a dream come true just to be drafted. Um, but to be the number one pick, I mean, it's a, it's a dream come true. Yes, sir. Hello. <laughs> I mean, it's just all the hard work. Um, you know, God gave me the ability to play baseball. And, you know, then I had to, you know, do the work to, to make it happen. And, uh, and my parents put a lot of work in you know, with me. So, uh, I mean, it was it was on my dad's birthday. It's a good birthday present. I recommend uh, any baseball player for a birthday present to give that to their father. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, I mean, all my family was at my house and, um, you know, it was uh, just a special day. And the perspective that you've gained now must look like, you know, I can deal with this yeah. because I've been through that. Absolutely. And that's the way, you know, people ask me um, on the ball field, too, you know, dealing with failure you know, or fans, you know, screaming at you, obscenities or, you know, whatever. You know, you know how you deal with that, you know, and I tell them what you just said. You know, I can deal with any of this because, you know, no matter what this fan screams at me, you know, just for instance, one of the stories is this in St. Louis, the guy stands up and screams out, you know, I'm Josh Hamilton and I'm a drug addict. 
And I just turned and looked at him and screamed back and said, tell me something I don't know. And he was like, oh my, oh my goodness, you see that? And he's my favorite guy now, he's my favorite guy. And he rooted for me the next three days. And in some places, you know, I had 12 year old kids screaming crackhead at me and blah, blah, blah. And I can't say the rest of it, but I just turned around and look at him and scream at him, where are your parents at? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, I mean, I know who I can mess around with in the, in the stands and stuff, and, you know, whatever they say don't bother me. It just makes me mad a little bit that they're affecting people around them and their enjoyment to watch the game or cheer for their team um, by saying negative stuff like that. And then if they got younger kids, you know, those people saying that stuff, then the young kids might say, well, what's that, or, you know, whatever, and then the parents got to, you know, it's just a chain reaction that, doesn't need to happen, but it's going to happen. And I'm used to it. Coming up, Josh shares some of the wisdom and perspective he's gained from his incredible experience. You know, you have plans for later, but you know, tomorrow's not promised to you. So I'm not really worried about tomorrow. What am I going to do today to you know, leave my mark or influence somebody's life or, or do something to help somebody? feel like you're a lot older than 26 do you go wow I've been through a lot in my life is it or do you still feel like hey I am really young I got a lot ahead of me sometimes when I wake up in the morning and I'm cracking and popping and rolling out of bed I feel like I'm about 40 but no I mean you know I feel, I feel my age um, you know I always thought I was mature before you know, even in high school, I was really mature. Um, you know, made good decisions, things like that. And, uh, you know, I just think I went through that time in my life. Um, I don't want to say because I never rebelled growing up or anything, but it was, uh, I don't know why. I mean, I know why now, but, you know, because I'm supposed to be telling people about God, telling people about what He did in my life, but. You know, I couldn't see that at that time. So, no, I don't feel older. And I had my family there. It uh, meant a lot because, you know, my parents went, they retired when I got drafted, and they went with me and watched me play, I mean, because that's all we ever did growing up. And they coached me. They were my coaches until I got to high school. Um, so, and when I was 12 years old, I said, you know, if you guys, if I get drafted, I want you guys to uh, retire, and, you know, I'll pay you out of debt. And, you just come watch me play. And that's what, exactly what I did. And that's what they did. And, um, you know, f so they, they, they traveled and went through a lot of stuff with me. And, uh, you know, I think it was, uh, it, I think it actually helped strengthen their faith too. Um, seeing me come out of this and uh, seeing what God's done in my life. You know, when I got drafted and I got the money um, that a number one pick gets, it was, you know, buy this, buy that, whatever. But I was never had any really joy in my life. Um, and, uh, you know, when I went through all the drug stuff, and um, my parents actually took control of my money. Thank the Lord, because I probably would be dead um, if, if they hadn't. And, uh, you know, we put, in, put it in the contract to, um, with my financial guys to, no, never thinking that anything like that would possibly happen. But, you know, God knew what was going to happen and uh, put it in there for a reason. But that caused a lot of tension between me and my parents because, you know, it was my money. But at the same time, you know, they had it. So while I was out using and stuff, it, it caused a lot of, a lot of trouble. Um, and it was, you know, they were doing the best thing for me, but, you know, I couldn't see it at the time. Um, but now, you know, I think they feel like they got the, their old Josh back and uh, are excited and happy and, you know, to have base because they, they love sports so much uh, and they miss it so much, you know. But at the same time, you know, I'm a separate man now. I got my wife, I got my kids, and, you know, they're just, they're fans now. So they're excited.
sure they'll be out here mm -hmm. to see you um, as soon as they possibly can. I mean, have you started to kind of give yourself some expectations on not baseball here, but just kind of life out here, what this next step in your life might be like? I have no clue. <laughs> you know, I, they say in like uh, program, 12 step programs uh, take one day at a time, but you know, I just, I think, you know, everyday life, people in general should live that way. You know, you have plans for later, but you know, tomorrow's not promised to you, so I'm not really worried about tomorrow. What am I going to do today to you know, leave my mark or influence somebody's life or, or do something to help somebody? And that's the way I approach it.